Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about how I started my career in technology by first going into the IT route over the traditional software development role that you will probably see a lot of people do who graduated with a computer science degree. But that's not what I did. So you may be wondering, what do people in IT do exactly? My understanding is that people in IT are experts who manage and troubleshoot issues that occur on computer hardware, software, network security for the organization that you're currently in basically it's that person that you usually speed dial on your phone when you're in the office or at home asking why is my computer not working and that's where we come in and try to figure out and solve that issue for you previous job that issue actually occurred many times where there's always going to be the client who has like a, a bunch of employees and they usually have issues with the computers so they will call in Here's one example of what happened that actually occurred once. Hi, this is IT support. Oh, hi Karen, how are you today? Oh, you don't see anything on your computer screen. Do you see that mouse that you're using right now that controls the computer? Try moving it. You hear that guys? The IT support said move the mouse. How's that gonna make the computer turn on? Like, come on, I'm gonna drive right now. Nani? Oh my god, that worked. What do you do? How did you get in my computer? What happened? Oh, it works now. Awesome, have a great day. Okay, let me just put this in the ticket. Help client with accessing the work computer utilizing external peripherals to increase work productivity. Duration, five minutes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, done and okay, I think I'm done for the, the day. Let's just wait for the next six hours of the same call. Yeah, that was probably very exaggerated but something like that did occur in a way and i try to make it a little bit more funny but yeah a lot of people usually call in because of issues where they're not very familiar with how to use computers sometimes and it's very normal and i feel like in that case this is why you need to have it support because if you don't really have very vast knowledge of technology then that's where we will come in even if you don't know even know how to turn on your computer that's why we're here <laughs> To get this video started, I'm going to be talking about how I even started right after college. So in 2017, I graduated with a computer science and mathematics degree from a SUNY university. Right after college, I went straight into the workforce. I actually didn't have any offers lined up, so the first thing I did of course was apply for new jobs. I spent most of my time on Indeed, Monster, and other type of job applications, even LinkedIn too, to see if I can get any type of interview. Because during that time, I didn't really care if green job or anything, I just wanted to get a job and get experience. Most of the jobs I was trying to get was in software development, it was in front-end or back-end developer, anything that was entry-level of course, because I didn't really have much experience besides just doing all the projects I've done in college and it was definitely tough. One thing that I realized was there's a lot of like really unrealistic job descriptions or qualifications for entry level. I've seen a lot that ask for like four plus years experience in Java, Python, and Java React or was it called React JS this is the name of it. I have worked a little bit of each. I think I spent at least two years or three years in Java, two years in C programming, which not a lot of jobs I've seen actually ask for C programming languages. That's supposed to be the one that I used the most from junior and senior year of college. But a lot of the companies lately just use Python or Java. So that's why I started to also self-study when I was just applying for jobs. After a few jobs I applied, I think I applied for at least 10 a day. After that, I started studying up on my programming languages. I also read some coding interviews online and also trying to look for maybe a bootcamp that can maybe help me advance my skills in coding as well. A part of me was just like, uh, I have experience building code for side projects, personal use, scripts. Does that count? Most of the time, it's either a yes or a no. Depending on the company, a lot of companies prefer you to actually have some type of work experience, especially if it's like a really small startup company or a company that just needs really good programmers, even if there's entry level. Because I feel like when it comes to entry level, it's usually a lower pay, meaning like if you have both that four plus year experience and you're also entry level, that's perfect for them. They don't have to pay you at like a level of a senior they could just pay you at the entry level and also gain your your experience of like four years of, of internships if you even have four years of internships during college. 
that's what I have noticed a lot. A lot of these companies really want to be able to pay you less, but also get as much of your abilities and your coding development at the same time. But of course, it really depends on what the company you're looking for. It's just something that I've noticed when I was applying and doing interviews with some of the companies that I was able to, that I actually wanted to do an interview with me. So I thought that was interesting. Now, of course, most of the time when I was applying for jobs online, most of the interviewers or recruiters just ignored my resume because it probably wasn't up to their expectation because I don't have that three years experience. But sometimes there are ones that just want to do a quick call with me either on the phone or by Skype. Most of the time it was through Skype interviews. So I always have to just dress up the top part, but that's about it. So that's, it's just going to be a tie and a dress shirt usually. But then during the phone interview, I think phone interviews are probably one of the hardest just because they can't see your expression. So the, all you can really do is try to be really optimistic and be like, you can do anything in life. <laughs> That's exactly how they expect you to sound like. And that just wasn't really me. I tried to be as realistic and honest as I can. And that's why most of the time of the phone interviews, I never really done very well in the beginning. But of course, I gained more and more interview experience and I got a lot better. Eventually, I was able to find a job, but it's probably not what you're expecting. You're probably thinking, huh, you probably got a software development job or you have a computer science or mathematics degree. But I feel like it really depends on what you're really interested in because if you're just passionate to be in a technology field, I don't think you should just rely on just having one, one type of, of role that you just want after college. I think you should try as many as you can and see if you really prefer to be doing coding or you prefer to do something else like IT support, for example, which I'm going to be talking about more later. As I mentioned before, when I got ghosted from those recruiters and of course I felt very really down. I felt like maybe it just wasn't for me maybe. Maybe I just don't have the skills that a lot of companies really want. So of course what I usually do is I just keep practicing, keep studying. But eventually I decided to go into a different route which I was also looking for different roles in IT as well. Because when it came to IT, IT is still part of a technology base and it's still in that criteria that I was really interested in because not just about coding but I also like to learn about how to build a PC for example like what do each of these parts do how do people do networking how do people do security how do you even talk to a client because I felt like in software development most of the time you'd be talking to your manager and your other colleagues in the developer side but I also want to be able to talk to clients as well and do some type of consulting experience. During the, both coding and consulting would have been perfect for me. But of course, since I just got out of college, I wasn't going to be really picky. I wanted to just maybe do a year in IT in any type of field, either do web development or just regular IT support. As long as I can get that experience, that'd be perfect for me. I'm not going to trap myself in just looking for that software development role. And that's what I believe in. And that hopefully that's a good tip for you guys as well. If you haven't have, if you haven't found a job yet, don't just let yourself just have that one single mindset. Try to see all different routes around you and see maybe you're interested in something else. But you can always come back to it to software development if you really want to do more in coding. Personally for me, I did both IT supporting eventually and I also do some coding and like during my free time and I even write articles about it on my Medium channel as well. I mean my Medium and the other Medium site, I did write some Python articles because I started to relearn some of my Python and I thought some of the scripts that I've written was something that most people will want to try out or use or even st start off from. So that's what I did. I decided to just apply to like 5 or 10 IT support work, IT consulting as well. And eventually a, a company actually reached out to me by email and asked, hey, I'm interested to talk to you. So I was wondering if we can talk on the phone first. So we did like a quick I think it was a 10 to 15 minute full interview and it was a really interesting talk to the uh, CEO of the company. He was very optimistic about what he does and I was really interested to just learn from him and also learn about like what the people in IT do exactly because I spent four years just learning about coding. I wanted to be able to just put my hands out there to learn about more than just coding. I also want to be able to do some other parts of IT and technology in general. So after that interview, a week later I got to meet him in person and I, and I decided to take the offer from there. I think one of the most rookie mistakes is actually accepting the offer or 
right off right right away that was one thing i noticed was probably a mistake i think i should have at least just look at what other opportunities i may have because i think i had like a few more interviews as well but i decided to just go with the first offer and i do recommend not to do that try to see what other jobs are out there and maybe you might find a better offer a better pay instead of your the first one you, you decide to go with i also want to say that it's better to have experience than just continue to looking for that same role that you really wanted for the last two or three years because maybe you just wouldn't get one for the whole year if that happens and you talk to a recruiter a recruiter will ask you what you've been doing for the past year or so so far after college you can't really say oh i just been um, interviewing for a software development role that's about it what you can do is you can say like i'm currently working in IT, which is still a technology-based area, and besides that, on the side, I'm also doing some of these side projects in coding. So something that was more interesting than just saying I just been interviewing for the whole year and I couldn't find anything, and I just been watching TV, watching friends on TPS, something like that is not going to cut out for a recruiter to actually consider you for the next round of interview. So that's something to think about. And I just think in general, you should always like start from the bottom and then make your way to the top because there's no way for you to ever get to go below to that bottom. That's just not possible. That's why I always, my mind says always like, there's always a way to grow. So why not just take that route instead of just being fixated to just one goal in mind. So I spent about a year and a half working for that IT startup company. And I'm planning to make some more videos, talk about my experience and also what is needed or required, like certification, for example, such as the CompTIA A+, which I want to talk about on the next video after this. And I also want to see if, you got, if anyone's actually interested in, in like these discussions about IT support work compared to software development, because I do find them to be pretty interesting. And of course, everyone have their own type of preferences. But overall, what I really love about IT support was customer relationship is a very important especially with your client and also just it's also good practice and a good thing to experience in my opinion so you can actually practice your socializing skills and your you're talking in general and also your troubleshooting especially if you can't see what they're doing at least you can try to work it out in your mind because i think it helps you really think is i find it to be more like a puzzle in my opinion but besides that i also just love working with computer hardware at time and also just writing code like scripts because even though you're in IT support you're also working with excel sheets um, you're working with macros um, scripts trying to find ways to get the computers and laptops set up for the next employer stuff like that so that's the video i hope you guys enjoy please like and subscribe for more content about technology in general technology lifestyle pokemon cards those are the big three topics that i'm doing and I just, uh, if you guys are interested, I'll be making more videos about IT support as well. Like how can you get into IT career path? The way I see it, IT support and IT consulting are very similar because you're trying to help your client, you're trying to make them better. And it's a lot of communication from back and forth with that. And I also wanted to talk about more of my experience if you guys are interested and also certifications that are required when, if you're going with the IT route over the software development route. So that's what I want to be talking about more on the next videos that I'll be making. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. And yeah, have a good day. Bye.